This video goes over solving the heat equation for a one-dimensional system and getting a symbolic solution, then using the solution to generate plots, an animation, and even create an Explore app. Let's get started. In this example, I'm going to sit in the middle of a couch. The ends of the couch are going to be held at a fixed temperature, that of the ambient temperature. And so, interested in how does the temperature difference uh, between the ambient temperature and the couch as a function of position along the couch uh, changes with time. So, if you look at this graph, basically the idea is I'm sitting in the middle and the two ends are fixed at zero relative to room temperature. Here's our heat equation. We're measuring the temperature as a function of both position and time. The first derivative of temperature with respect to time is proportional to the second derivative of temperature with respect to position. What are our conditions? We have two boundary conditions. First, at the left end and the right end, those temperatures do not vary with the ambient temperatures. They are fixed at zero difference. The other condition is that initially at t equals zero, this is the shape of the temperature difference as a function of position. So we write out our conditions, the two boundary conditions and the initial condition. Now we solve. We enter PD solve and give it the list of equations or the set of equations. We hit enter and wait for it to return an answer. This problem is sufficiently complicated enough that it will take some time for your computer to come up with a symbolic solution. Because the solution is quite messy symbolically, I'll report just the simplified solution, and I can tell Maple to assume that all the constants are positive. And we are left with this. As you can see, it's a bunch of numbers, a bunch of variables, and a infinite series, which is not surprising given the boundary conditions. One thing you can do is to combine all the solutions so it's within the summation. And it looks like this. Now I'm going to walk us through building a procedure which will allow us to actually use this solution to create a plot, some animation, and an explore function. We cannot have a solution that has an infinite number of series, so therefore we're going to create a procedure which returns the output of a set number of terms. We'll call this the TSOL, and it is a procedure and we are going to need to pass it some values. For example, we need to pass it what is alpha, which I will call alpha zero. We will need to pass it L, which I will call L sub zero. And we will also need to pass it the number of terms that we want it to return. Shift enter. This is not necessary, this next line, but it's useful. We're going to call the souls term so that's a global term so i want to put this in my expression here souls semicolon shift enter and then we're going to also use some local terms one i'm going to have what is one term and then eventually we'll add up the term i'll call that s and i'll need an n1 which is just a uh, dummy variable shift enter so s is the operand. It is going to be everything that is in our summation. But to do that, we need to make sure that everything here is inside, which is why we call the combine uh, procedure. Operand, the first operand within the summation, after we combine everything on the right-hand side of our solutions. Semicolon. Shift enter. Then we're going to evaluate this operand. And we're going to give it the fact that alpha escape is equal to alpha underscore underscore zero and L is equal to under L underscore underscore zero. The values that we passed to the procedure. Shift enter and return. Now we are ready to return a combination of all these terms and we're going to count N. So we're going to return by adding up each term where we have evaluated each term such that n is equal to n1 and n1 goes from 
one to the number of terms that we want to add up. Shift enter and then end pros. And if you put a semicolon, it will return what it expects. And if you put a colon, it just returns uh, nothing. One constant that we have not defined is k, so I'm going to make it globally as a value of 1. Now let's test to see if tsol returns something that's useful. Shift enter tsol, and we'll make alpha is equal to, I don't know, uh, zero, uh, 1. We'll make l0 equal to 1, and let's ask for two terms. You see, you can get this term plus this term, and that is what our procedure has done. The only value that is not defined is, t, or the only variables that are not defined are t and x. Now we're ready to test it by plotting. We can test to see if our solution is working properly at t equals zero by evaluating t sol, and I'm going to give it all the standard l alpha sub zero and l sub zero constants. And we're going to use three terms and plot between the two ends of the couch. With three only three terms, you get this value. If we use 10 terms, we get something that looks closer to what our initial couch temperature difference looked like. This next expression is an explorer. And we're going to vary n, the number of terms. As you add more n terms, you get a better and better approximation to our initial temperature difference. Time to animate. We're going to animate our plot, but now what we're going to do is since our solution includes time, we're going to have time change from zero to some final value. I'll use again nine terms to plot out our system. Again, we can't plot to 50. When we hit enter, we get this lovely graph. And if we click on it, we can see that as time goes by, it eventually the couch comes to complete equilibrium. Finally, why don't we explore an animation of a plot? The variable parameters that we'll be changing are n and alpha. Hitting enter, you can see here's the initial shape of our curve. If we click on it and play, it animates and falls down. And it continuously does that. Let's go back to zero. Let's change to a very high alpha value. Hmm, doesn't look very smooth. We'll increase the number of n values. And then again, we'll click on it, plot, and you can see what happens to its shape immediately as a function of time. The advantage of a symbolic solution that we generated is that you don't have to recalculate everything from scratch if you want to look at different positions at different times. Just use the T-Sol solution that we wrote.